traveling eastbound on the 210 freeway on our way to check out one of the last remaining structures used in the 1947 holiday film, It's a Wonderful Life. Nope, we're not going to Bedford Falls. We're headed to an older neighborhood of La Cañada Flint Ridge nestled in the Crescenta Valley. Hi, welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We are in La Cañada in Southern California, and this is actually an integral scene for the filming of It's a Wonderful Life, one of the classic Hollywood films. Right here, I'm standing at the entrance of Bailey Park. If you remember the martinis in the film, the bar owner got to move up thanks to the effort of the Bailey building alone. A new subdivision was created here, and it was because of their efforts that Mr. Martini was able to raise his standard of living and move to a nice suburban neighborhood. If you could imagine, 74 years ago, there was a large tree here on this corner which framed the scene of the Martini's new neighborhood. There was a branch hanging over the street from which the Bailey Park sign was hanging. The opening scene shows two vehicles. One was George Bailey and his wife Mary Bailey and the Martini family loaded down with their children and their goat and all the other people. They head off to the left here up Lamore Road when in reality the house that they actually shot the scene at is up here on Vero Road. I'm going to take a walk up there. This area back then did not have all these trees. The houses that you see opposite the street there over there are period to that time. So it was just being created after the end of World War II, all the suburbia started developing. But the old jalopies were headed off in that direction, right there, which would have been kind of wrong. Would not figure that out, obviously. A lot of people don't know that the filming location here is on Vero Road. As you can see, there's no tree here anymore. In fact, it may have been where the sidewalk is. There's no spot that marks this as the location. You would, you would almost want a plaque here saying this is a filming location for one of the classic Hollywood films, but that doesn't exist. You know, and while I can't prove it, I suspect that they chose this neighborhood because it was partially under construction at the time and there was a majestic backdrop of mountains. But it's also problematic because when you think of Bedford Falls, you think of the snowy eastern state and this neighborhood screams sunny Southern California. I always thought Bedford Falls was situated in New York where it snows and because the crotchety bank examiner mentions how he needed to hurry back home to Elmira to spend Christmas with his family. It's actually believed that Frank Capra, the film director, modeled Bedford Falls after Seneca Falls in upstate New York, which he likely visited. In fact, if you look at the Rumsey Street Bridge in Seneca Falls, you will see that it very much resembles the bridge that George Bailey jumped from in the movie, only that was on a movie set. But when Jimmy Stewart saw the Bedford Falls movie set, he said that it reminded him of his hometown, which was Indiana and Pennsylvania. We're gonna walk up to the house I'd always suspected that this neighborhood was in uh, Southern California initially, thinking it was the San Fernando Valley, but later learning that it was in the Crescenta Valley. It's hard to believe that my Hollywood hero, Jimmy Stewart, as well as Donna Reed, were here on this street filming back in 1946. It's a Wonderful Life was actually released in January of 1947. It was shot in July of 1946. It was not well received at the time. The Martini House right here. It looks pretty much the same way that it looked back in 1946. It still has the same house numbers on it. And you can see that's where Jimmy Stewart and Donna Reed stood as they presented the house to Mr. and Mrs. Martini. It looks like the walkway may be original, at least has the same curvature as in the film. Besides Stuart and Reed in this scene were William Edmonds, who played Giuseppe Martini, and Argentina Brunetti, who played Maria Martini, although she didn't speak one word in the film. Opening scene starts here where children are running across. You can see that house 
right there. Mr. and Mrs. Martini, welcome home. Over this direction, you will see Sam Wainwright making fun, saying hee haw. Hee haw! Sam Wainwright. Oh, who cares? This is also where George and Mary Bailey stand in the street and uh, have a short conversation with Sam Wainwright, played by Frank Albertson, before he takes off in his chauffeured limousine. As Sam drives off that direction, very dejected, George Bailey feels like an utter failure by comparison, and he walks back and kicks the door on his jalopy. Sam had already made a fortune and led a pretty glamorous lifestyle by comparison, and George is struggling unable to ever leave Bedford Falls. Now this house and driveway here are the same as seen here where Jimmy Stewart walks back to his jalopy. House looks a bit different with dormers added and other exterior changes over the past 74 years. Now if you pay attention to the position of the shadows in the film you'll notice that the sun is directly overhead which is a summer occurrence that's right, this Christmas classic was shot in the middle of a Los Angeles heat wave in July. The town of Bedford Falls was a movie set at the Encino RKO Ranch, which was dismantled in 1954 to make way for a housing subdivision. It sat west of what is now the Balboa Recreation Center. The ranch was also where Donna Reed broke the window out of that drafty old Granville mansion featured in the movie. While she threw that rock, she made a wish to make George part of her future, year, despite his year dreams. After that, I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm going to see the world. If you remember in the film, Mr. Potter had such a stranglehold on the town of Bedford Falls that uh, not many people could advance. It was the Bailey brothers that helped people bring themselves up in the world. They could live in homes like this. That film still remains the classic film. In fact. When it first came out, it was not well received. However, as time has gone on, people have been more enamored by it. It's been become one of the biggest classic movies of all time. And uh, I thought we would do a Christmas special on History Hunters. We haven't done that before, but we enjoy Christmas. We also enjoy all the great Christmas movies that we get to watch, including It's a Wonderful Life. It's one that I absolutely have to watch. It's uh, one that I didn't start watching until I was in my 40s, I believe, and I realized how touching and heartwarming it was for George Bailey to actually be so disgruntled with his life and uh, realize that his purpose was a lot bigger than he realized that it was. It's the miracle, courtesy of Clarence and his boss, Angel Gabriel, that allowed George to see what the world would have been like had he not been born. To me, the most haunting scene, however, is the one where Clarence tells George, each man's life touches so many other lives, and when he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? You see, George, you really had a wonderful life. To me, that is the lesson of the entire film, is to appreciate what you have and the role that you have in your life. Bread, that this house may never know hunger. Salt, that life may always have flavor. And wine, that joy and prosperity may reign forever. Enter the Martini Castle. The only other filming location that I know that still exists today is the Beverly Hills High School Gymnasium, which is the site of the dance between George and Mary. The gymnasium there has been dubbed the swim gym because it has a retracting gym floor and a swimming pool underneath, which still is in operation today. George and Mary fell into it for a memorable scene. Some of the high school's earliest buildings date back to 1927, but the unique swim gym was built by the Works Progress Administration in 1939. So from the entrance of Bailey Park, I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. We love showing movie history as well as history of California and different parts of the country. We would always appreciate you subscribing to our channel, giving us a like, maybe a comment. Thanks so much and Merry Christmas.